Hello and welcome to Sports of Cumbria. I'm your host, Nick Gordon. As you can see, we're at the Neil Sports Centre at Brunton Park here in Carlisle. In this episode, we will be looking at rugby, football and cricket in this historic and atmospheric area of the Lake District. Joining me today is ex-Harlequins player and current coach of Carlisle Rugby Club, Matthew Shields. Matthew, thank you very much for joining us Thanks today. Thanks for having me. I've got a couple of questions, if that's all right. Yeah, of course. First one is, what drives you as a coach? Uh, I think it's the ability to put an environment in place to try and bring the best out of individuals, um, to help them achieve their goals and reach their aspirations within the sport. I think that's, as a coach, that you know that's what you really want to strive to do. Yeah, good. Um, this second question, I think, is a, is a big one, certainly for, for us up here in, uh, in Cumbria. So, what sets Cumbrian rugby aside from other counties? Yeah, as you touched on there, um, I think you talk about that northern grit with players and um, certainly in, a, in an aggressive sport like rugby, having that grit and that determination is something that, uh, that really comes across. And, and again, on top of that, there is a, a really big player pool, some really big youth teams uh, throughout Cumbria. Um, so, that coupled with with that aggression uh, has seen, you know, there's a certain, quite a few people now that are playing Premiership Rugby that have, have come from Cumbria and it's really good to see. Right. Oh, really brilliant, yeah. Um, proudest career moments? From a playing perspective, I think it's just that, um, the ability to, to play the sport that I loved professionally. Sure. Um, started playing when I was six and, you know, my parents obviously supported me right the way through, uh, taking me all over the country, uh, different places and uh, cold, uh, wet and rainy you know Tuesdays Thursdays Sundays yeah. um, so I think that's really proud that I actually managed to achieve my goal of playing mm -hmm. professionally and that's something that obviously I shared that moment with my parents who uh, said putting a lot of time and effort in in giving me the, the opportunity to, to pursue my dreams um, I think a particular moment that stands out would be playing at uh, playing at Saracens at Wembley in front of 85,000 people had my mum and dad there and my sisters and uh, some of my wider family for, who live down south so yeah, looking back now, that was a, a pretty proud moment. And uh, I think you, you probably appreciate it more looking back at it now than you probably did at the time. Sure. Um, but yeah, yeah, really, really proud of that looking back. Matthew, thank you very much for your time. It's much Thanks appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Women's football has been getting a lot more, more eyes on recently, thanks to events such as the Women's World Cup and the Women's Super League. And we wanted to see what Cumbria had to offer. So here's a quick glimpse of a training session of the Stanix Women's Football Club and a few words from their coach. Uh, Stanix ladies, um, we have a number of teams in the in the club, about 26 teams I think, and uh, this is the most senior ladies team. We won the won the championship in our first season there in that in the Lancashire League. Um, we got to a final in Spain on a tour um, a couple of seasons back, a Spanish tour where we played lots of international teams, um, which is good. And when they were in younger age groups, they won the leagues, they won county cups, uh, league cups, so they've done they've done pretty well. Ladies football being on TV, you've got the uh, the Women's Super League on a Sunday as well. But I think adults playing it makes a big difference, so it's not just seen as, you know, you finish playing at 14, 15, you go on and you can enjoy football for as, as long as you like, really. I think they know that they can, you know, they can continue on and it's actually helped recruitment because, you know, players come into the club wanting, you know, a pathway all the way through to adult football and not just finishing when they're 15 or 16, so it's helped us that way. First time, on. Oh, lots of reasons really, I mean sport, keeping fit, there's the mental side, um, friendships, uh, teamwork, communication. I think one of the reasons why it's, why it's important and particularly these days is you know fitness and, and mental health side of it and really being enjoying sport, being outdoors, um, you know it's, it's advantageous for, for all players at all levels so yeah and it's, it's good to see now uh, as we're moving out of Covid that they're back playing football and enjoying it again. We are now joined by a few players from the Sonics Ladies Football Club. Ladies, welcome. It's a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. So, how are you feeling about taking on Matthew's gauntlet? Yeah, really excited. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, it looks great. I did the dive start at the end as well. Yeah, you're going to have a great time. You really, really are. So, here's a quick look at what we've got in store. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Matthew's Gauntlet. Today we're going to take on Brunton Park, where our very competitors' sport and ability will be pushed to the limit and beyond. If the contestant somehow manages to score, they will be generously rewarded with five seconds off their time. 
However, if they miss, nothing but utter embarrassment. Survived the meteor, so good luck getting one past it. If you score, you'll be generously rewarded by getting five seconds off your total time. However, if you miss, nothing but utter embarrassment. Should we have a look at your score and see how you're doing on the leaderboard? Yeah. <laughs> we here at Sports of Cumbria were very lucky to get exclusive access to a local cricket game pitting against Cumbria's local girls against Scotland's ladies. Here's Mike Mitchelson talking about the game and how it feels to be back on the field. Uh, obviously last year it was majorly affected, uh, we only managed to get half a season in last year. Um, a lot of restrictions, can't use changing rooms, can't provide teas, which is a bit of a tradition uh, with afternoon cricket. Um, this year we've got an earlier start, we're hopefully going to get a full season in. Still under some restrictions for making sure everything's running in a Covid safe manner. Um, but hopefully as restrictions ease we'll be able to do more and use inside the pavilions. Obviously in the winter lockdown nobody managed any net practice, uh, we had to cancel all the indoor nets which affects our junior coaching for the children and the ladies, uh, but now we're back outside, weather permitting that, uh, you know, and everybody's really enthusiastic about it, uh, the club's thriving, uh, we've got a huge junior section and uh, we've got a thriving ladies section where we're getting 20 odd ladies turning up for practice and coaching. When people were excluded from playing cricket because of the restrictions, it was you know, some of the things people um, wanted to be doing when they were in lockdown and indoors, not mixing with people very well, but now the cricket's up and running, it gives people a chance to get outside, participate in the support, uh, in sport, and I'm sure that does help mentally. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for this week. Thank you for watching. A huge thank you to Matthew Shields, Stanix Ladies Football Club, Lanacost Cricket Club and Carlisle United for allowing us to film here today at Brunton Park. Be sure to join us next week where we'll be in Lancashire where we will be seeing what they have to offer in the world of sports. I'll be sure to see you there. Goodbye. <laughs>